today we will talk about uh, translations uh, in the Phoenix application and uh, uh, open source projects from Curiosum called Kanta. But first thing first, uh, as Shimon said, my name is Krzysztof. Uh, I'm a full stack developer for about the of about five years of experience. Uh, about the three years, I was a Ruby on Rails developer, and for about the one year, uh, I worked full time as an Elixir develop developer in the Curiosum. Uh, I'm also a big fan of a clean code and architecture and all of the Uncle Bob's uh, books. And uh, I'm also a home brewer and certified beer judge. Uh, but about this topic, we will also talk a little bit later. So the agenda of the uh, of this talk will be a couple of words about the get text itself, about the problems with the with the get text and solution that uh, we should provide in the Kanta. Uh, I will try to do a brief introduction to the uh, to the our package, explain how it works, and also. Uh, discuss the plans for uh, future development. So first, uh, GNU get text. For some of you that are not aware, what is it? Uh, get text is a, a open source project uh, from the GNU, uh, and it's all about the translations, inter internationalization, localization software, etc. Uh, it's all. Uh, file-based system and use the template file files with extensions of POT and a, a direct translation file, a PO file, uh, which are created for every language we want to translate uh, strings into. It also provides some helper comments for uh, invocation of a get text function. Uh, it also have a system of uh, organizing translate translations into the into the domains and the contexts, and of course uh, it also provides us a functionality to create uh, both singular and plural forms of the messages. Uh, this is a syntax of a, of a get text and the PO file. Uh, the first two line is a uh, definition of uh, get text messages. So in the first line, we have a message ID, which in this example is my name is and the placeholder, uh, and the translation to Polish, so a message string mam na imię, which is the same uh, as the upper one. And down below, we have an invocation or a helper from the get text, so we can invocate this with a message ID and get text get our uh, current selected languages and provide us a translation for them. And about the plural forms, uh, it's not as easy as before. Uh, we need to create the header of a plural form. Then we need to define how many plurals form are available in, uh, in these translations. And we need to also provide the rules uh, which will be used to, to select the uh, the, plural, the plural form uh, from the PO file. So as you can see here, we have also this message ID, but we have message ID plural, which is a plural form of a, uh, of a word or a sentence. And for each rule we defined in the, in the plural forms header, we need to provide the translation of this form. So here we have a word weeks and the translations tydzień, tygodnie, tygodni to Polish. Uh, which is related to the uh, division of a uh, count of the weeks and the rules we provided. And down below, we uh, see that we have another uh, function or invocation and get text uh, when we need to pass the message ID, the message ID plural, and the count of a weeks we uh, want to translate. So how it looks in the Elixir? Uh, fortunately, we have a, a get text library in the Elixir, and uh, the implementation is also very simple. We need to just create the, the helper module, uh, use get text, pass the uh, our OTP application name, and we are done. And then we are able to uh, use all of these uh, get text functions like uh, get text, like end get text, or this new one from the bottom, 
bigot text, which is a domain-based messages. So here we have a uh, domain errors and we can create as many domains uh, as we want in our software and it will probably improve uh, the, the structure of our translations. Uh, and yeah, go next. Uh, maybe some of you already noticed that uh, in the simple applications in, with, uh, for example, two languages, get text it's uh, kind of a good solution for that. But in the big application, when we want, the, for example, 20 languages and the uh, different domains, different contexts, etc., this folder structure in get text could be a very overwhelming stuff to uh, to handle and manage. Yeah, so as I said, uh, the main problem, but uh, not the only one with the get text is, is uh, that is a file based system. So every change in this POT files or PO files uh, will require the new release of, uh, of your application. Also this complex structure I was talking before uh, and the updates in this uh, in this complex structure. So imagine that we need to add uh, one new sentence in English and translate it to the uh, to the 20, uh, 20 other languages in the files uh, without any monitoring for uh, tracking missing or uh, abandoned messages. Uh, it could be very error prone here. So here comes the Kanta which aims to be a user-friendly translations manager for Elixir and Phoenix projects. And what else Kanta supposed to do? So the main goal is to seamlessly integrate the uh, already existing GetText files in the, in the projects into the database, but not only. Uh, also, it should provide the simple user-friendly interface for adding, modifying translations. Uh, despite the fact it will rely on the database in the Ecto, uh, it should be as efficient as get text. So any kind of uh, caching and the optimization uh, will be our uh, second goal, I said. And also in Kanta will try to introduce features missing in other tools like get text like the tracking of the of the existence of translations, so the stuff about the missing and, uh, and abandoned, and also something about integrations with the TMS tools, uh, because a lot of translators uh, are using the, um, the online tools for, for handling this. And these tools can provide us a CSV files or a JSON files, uh, not the get text files. So we will try to integrate it with Kanta uh, to improve the, the experience between the uh, translator and the developers. And also, uh, we still have another ideas for the, for the new features in Kanta, so there will be more, I hope. So why Kanta over software as a service like solutions from the uh, from the network? So the main reason I think is a price. Uh, as you can see on the right, uh, there's a pricing of some of the uh, um, software as a service translation uh, solution. And it's kind of expensive because this individual plan and this basic plan uh, provide us, I think, about the five languages. So it's still for a uh, for a small applications or a, a small market. Also, these tools uh, will provide our uh, software the latency because a lot of them are using some kind of APIs. So the HTTP time uh, will be bad for our application. And also Kanta will be open sourced and open for customization. So we can always fork our library adjust it to your needs uh, and uh, and use it as you um, as you want and the last is a seo so uh, in this current uh, approaches with software as a service solutions when we uh, download some translations from other services or using some scripts to uh, to replace a string on uh, on the javascript uh, there is a problem with uh, search engine optimization 
uh, which are uh, kind of crucial on the on the big applications. Okay, so now a little uh, tech talk, because in Kanta we want to uh, make installation as easy as possible, and uh, I think it's not as bad as it uh, can be. So first of all, uh, we need to of course add the add Kanta to the to the dependencies in our mixed ex file, uh, and also provide the the configuration. So we need to pass the uh, endpoint of our application for a, for a web-based UI and also uh, repo for our database handling. Uh, yeah, and also the project root because we need to extract the uh, messages from the PO files. And last thing uh, is to adjust our get text module. So we need to pass one additional um, parameters here which will be a repo, and here we need to pass a Kanta get text repo as a uh, behavior module from Kanta. Another thing is to create the mig migrations uh, for uh, tables in our database. And uh, if you are familiar with uh, OBAN, it's the same approach. So we have a Kanta migrations module with uh, up and down functions, and we just need to create a simple migration uh, copy and paste it, this uh, this invocation, and we are basically done. And all of these uh, tables from the from the bottom will be created in our database. Okay. Another thing is the uh, is the router. So here another uh, similarity. So if you are using the live dashboard, here is the same approach. We need to import the the router and pass the macro, uh, this time Kanta dashboard with a path to our Kanta UI to provide this uh, to our application. And then we, need, we can access uh, our um, translations dashboard with all of the domains, messages, translations, both singular and uh, plural ones with uh, editing, uh, deletion, adding, etc. So does it work? So partially. And uh, here you can see uh, the software I made a uh, couple weeks ago. And it's a software for a Polish homebrewers association. It's a homebrewers competition software. And as I want to uh, share this software also abroad, uh, I plug in Kanta to it. And uh, from my experience, the current state of Kanta is already uh, product production ready, but it still lack uh, uh, a couple of features I want to add to them. So uh, coming back to this question, does it work? Yes, it worked, but it will work better in the future. So the roadmap is to publish the, our release candidate version to Hex, and we try to do that today, but uh, we still depend on some fork of the official GetText library, and we need to wait uh, for uh, GetText developers to merge our pull request. So uh, I think it should happen soon, but for now we are not able to, uh, to publish it to Hex, but the repo is already public, so you can uh, go to GitHub and check uh, check the current state of the library. Uh, also another feature will be to add the uh, translations tracking to the UI as a business logic are already there, uh, but the UI lack it. And also we need to test some more complex scenarios of the implementations to be more prepared for a bigger application. And uh, the last one is to first attempt to, the, uh, to this TMS or translations uh, manage software integration. So that's the plan for the uh, next week, months, etc. And for now, it's uh, the end of this intro to Kanta. So thanks for your attention. Uh, here you can see links to the to the GitHub and uh, and the Hex. As I said, the Hex uh, are already uh, it's not already done. 
but uh, you can check GitHub and stay tuned for the for the update to the to the hex one. So thanks for your attention, and I think we need, uh, we can go for the, go to the QA session now. Okay, so uh, basically the first question will come from my side. And in the meantime, I encourage everyone in the chat to ask the questions. Uh, but the first question uh, to you, Krzysztof, uh, will be uh, if you can give a little bit of more information on how it actually works from the perspective of uh, someone who is not technical and can uh, start use the software. So let's imagine that we have someone who's responsible for the uh, website in the company, and this website is hosted uh, via Phoenix. And there are a bunch of translations inside of Phoenix. And what this person is basically doing in Kanta to to translate the the the, the given key. Yeah, so as we can saw on the uh, on these images, uh, we can just go for a for a path we specified in the router for the for example Kanta path, and uh, we will have a very simple form with an original text and translated text for each of the uh, languages available in the uh, in the project. So a non technical person uh, will be very happy to not uh, needed to handle a lot of uh, some files and structures because it's a really simple form with the two fields and the save button to just create a, a new translation for a sentence or a word. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's a very useful tool. If, for instance, uh, some of you build build a, a software for your clients or for your uh, employers. And uh, every time you want to translate something, you have to pass this PO files to someone who is able to translate it. Now you'll be able basically to, to let them know where is the, uh, let's call it an admin panel for, tr for translations. Uh, of course, keep in mind to, uh, to not make it public. So you have to authenticate the, the users somehow before they get there. And uh, basically, you can go one by one for each translation to, to translate them. And uh, once you save it, it should be already translated live on the website. No need to, to push any comments, as Krzysztof said, which is uh, very useful, of course. Uh, one important thing here is that we rely on the uh, data storage. So, so we have to have like a DB in use here because, uh, of course, we have to somehow omit uh, using the PO files. Um, and to speed it up, as Krzysztof said, also, it would be great to cache it somehow. So it's also uh, part of the Kanta. Yeah, I think it also should be an Ecto-based uh, database as we need to pass the repo to the, uh, to the Kanta. So any other approach for database communication will not work for now. Maybe when uh, Kanta will be more mature, uh, we'll think about that. Yeah. So yeah, just let's say one additional thing, and I still encourage you to ask questions if you have some. Um, it basically also means that you don't have to do any changes to your code. GetTech still works and you can still use PO files. It's just an uh, additional layer on top of GetText, if, if, uh, if I can say so. It's just basically UI for edi ed editing the translations in the app. But the GetText will still work as it used to. Uh, nothing changed. Um, yeah. And if, if you haven't noticed yet, there is a button on top. Uh, check Kanta repository in GitHub. Uh, click here. If, if you would like to see the repo, uh, I encourage you to go there and start the repo so that uh, once there are going to be some nice updates, you'll be able to see it. Mm. 
apart from that, I can't see any questions to Krzysztof. So I think that would be it for, for today. So thank you very much, Krzysztof. Um, and thank you for your work also on the, on the open source project. Um, and uh, that would be it.